We finally arrived. This must be the place where the strange formula was reported. But that's weird. It seems like there's nothing here. What? What is this? One is being divided by a zero. You must not do something like this. That's certainly true. Division by zero is strictly forbidden in mathematics. This formula is breaking that taboo, and yet it claims the result is infinity. What an outrageous equality. Well, I can kind of understand the feeling behind it though. One over zero equals infinity. We can't just accept this equality as it is. But perhaps this is what it's trying to say. What do you mean? Let's consider the fraction one over x. And let x approach zero. To be precise, x takes positive values and gets infinitely close to zero. At that moment, the denominator becomes infinitely small, so 1 over x diverges to positive infinity. However, this merely states that 1 over x grows without bound and does not imply that positive infinity is an actual number. We simply write positive infinity because it's convenient. But this equality explicitly states that dividing 1 by 0 results in infinity as the outcome. That's unacceptable. What Sundaman says makes perfect sense, but if the calculation 1 over 0 were possible, and its result turned out to be some kind of infinity. Hmm, it's a difficult concept to accept though. Well anyway, let's move on. Now next is... The first equality is the same as the previous one. And the second equality is... It's somewhat similar to the first one, but this time it says dividing 1 by infinity results in 0. The rules of 0 and infinity reversed? Dividing by a large number brings the result closer to 0, I can sort of understand this sentiment too, but treating infinity as if it were a number still bothers me. But wouldn't it be cool if such calculations were allowed? Ah, uh, maybe. Let's move on. This, this is... It's spinning round and round. What exactly is this supposed to mean? Wait, does this have anything to do with infinity? Look carefully. Here, the point on the circle corresponds to the point on the x-axis. Well, indeed, the two points are moving in sync. If we consider the x-axis as the number line, the point on the x-axis moves across the entire set of real numbers. Since the two points are linked, we can say the points on the circle correspond to real numbers as well. However, can you see the one exception? Where is it? Um... Ah, could it be here? Exactly. If you take a point on the x-axis far into the distance, you can get infinitely close to this point, but you'll never actually reach it. So, we designate the imaginary point corresponding to this as the point at infinity. Alternatively, by identifying the x-axis in the circle, we can regard this point itself as the point at infinity. Ah, uh, really? I kinda get it, but not really. What we've been calling infinity so far can be understood as this point at infinity. In this interpretation, positive infinity and negative infinity are indistinguishable. There is only one point at infinity and the number line is connected through the point at infinity. This is how it looks when represented in a diagram. Here the number line is represented in the form of a circle. Whether you move in the positive direction or the negative direction, you can approach the point at infinity. This is quite an intuitive explanation though. Well, it's one way of thinking about it, I suppose. But does this lead to anything useful? Of course. Let me explain with a simple example. Let's consider the graph of y equals 1 over x. This is one of the basic graphs, but it has the troublesome property of being undefined at x equals 0. However, if we assume that 1 over 0 equals infinity here... Uh, 1 over 0 refers to the case where x equals 0 and y equals 1 over x. In other words, if we think of 1 over 0 equals infinity, then y equals 1 over x can be defined over the entire set of real numbers. That's exactly right. Here, you don't need to worry about whether to choose positive infinity or negative infinity. There is only one point at infinity. Ah, uh, that's true. Also, instead of the equality 1 over 0 equals infinity, let's consider the equality 1 over infinity equals 0. In y equals 1 over x when x equals infinity, it can be interpreted that its value becomes 0. Since there is only one point at infinity, we just need to go infinitely far to the right or left. Earlier it was about up and down, but now it's about left and right. It's symmetrical and interesting. Hmm, but I feel like there's something strange about this story. For now, we regard this point as the point at infinity, and I understand that this is one way to think about it, but that doesn't mean we can accept that infinity actually exists. There's no corresponding point for this on the x-axis. 
Also with the explanation so far, it's still unclear why dividing 1 by 0 would result in infinity. I just can't accept it. Well, it's true that the focus so far has been on intuitive understanding, and not so much on rigorous discussion. The question of whether infinity exists is also a philosophical one, but at least mathematically what can be said is that we can construct infinity using the real numbers. Construct infinity using the real numbers? Huh, what do you mean? To be precise, based on the real numbers and their arithmetic rules, it's possible to rigorously reproduce the arithmetic rules for infinity. In other words, if you accept the existence of real numbers, you can prove that there exists an entity that satisfies the properties of what is called infinity. Is that really possible? Then let's actually try it. The fundamental idea is to use ratios. For example, let's represent the ratio 1 to 2 like this. We'll use brackets for ratios this time, but don't worry about it for now. Since it's a ratio, multiplying both values by the same number doesn't change the ratio. Well that's true, but what does this have to do with infinity? Well you'll understand soon. Now let's identify a real number x with the ratio x to 1. If you find it questionable to identify these, you can simply think of the ratio being abbreviated as x. Additionally, by borrowing the notation of fractions, let's write this ratio as x over 1. Although it looks like a fraction, this is just a matter of notation. And it's still representing a ratio. Also, please note that this is a local notation we're using just within this explanation. By writing it this way, x corresponds to x over 1 so it feels intuitive. Now since x corresponds to x to 1, in particular, 0 corresponds to 0 to 1. This might seem a bit strange, but even though one of the two numbers forming the ratio is 0, we will accept this as a valid ratio for now. This can be discussed more rigorously using the concept of homogeneous coordinates. But for now, let's assume that the ratio 0 to 1 exists. If we write this in the form of a fraction, it looks like this. Now here we go. Let's define infinity like this. Huh, this is infinity. It's just the ratio 1 to 0. Uh, what do you mean? If you write it as a fraction, it looks like this. Ah, this is... 1 over 0 has appeared. It's the same form as the expression we've seen several times. However, while it's written in the form of a fraction, we're not actually dividing by 0. It's simply representing the ratio 1 to 0, and defining such a ratio itself is possible. Well, I guess that's true, but... feels so simple. As a note, let's not accept 0 to 0 as a valid ratio. An intuitive reason for this would be that 0 multiplied by anything is still 0 so it doesn't make much sense as a ratio. In fraction form it would become the indeterminate form 0 over 0. However, ultimately this is just a matter of definition. There are attempts to define 0 over 0, but since it would stray from the main topic, we'll prohibit 0 to 0 for this discussion. I don't really get it, but okay. Now let's actually try calculating with infinity. If we multiply a real number x by infinity, first we identify x with the ratio x to 1. And infinity was defined as 1 to 0. Here if we treat them as regular fractions, what happens when we multiply the two ratios? Can we really calculate it the same way as regular fractions? If so, we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So the result is x over 0. That's exactly right. But, we're calculating with the zeros in the denominators. Is that really okay? Well, it feels like we're calculating with fractions. But in reality, we're just calculating a new ratio from the two ratios, so it's not actually dividing by zero. You can safely calculate it. Got it! Now let's assume that x is not zero. Then... I understood everything. If x is not zero, you can divide the numerator and denominator by x and the ratio remains the same, and this matches the definition of infinity. Well done, Zundemon. To summarize, multiplying x by infinity resulted in infinity. By the way, we assumed here that x is not zero, but if you multiply zero by infinity, skipping the intermediate steps, you end up with this result after similar calculations, and here you encounter the undefined value zero over zero. This means the calculation itself is invalid. So you can't multiply 0 by infinity? Well, this is partly a matter of convention. But in this approach where consistency of calculations is prioritized, you can think of 0 times infinity as being undefined. Understood. Next, what happens if we add a real number x in infinity? Probably, it'll be infinity. Oh well, yes, but let's calculate it properly to confirm. Uh, 
X is identified with X to 1, and infinity was defined as 1 to 0, right? Here, if we proceed with the calculation as if it were fraction addition, it looks like we should find a common denominator. So we align the denominators, X over 1 becomes this, and 1 over 0 becomes this, so the result is 1 over 0, which means infinity, as expected. Adding infinity results in infinity? This infinity seems to have the properties we expected. By the way, what happens with addition or subtraction between two infinities? If you calculate infinity minus infinity, skipping the intermediate steps by performing similar calculations, the result is 0 over 0, rendering this calculation invalid. In other words, infinity minus infinity is also undefined. Since infinity minus infinity is also a type of indeterminate form, it makes sense that the result leads to the indeterminate form 0 over 0. Similarly, calculating infinity plus infinity also results in undefined. Since infinity doesn't have a distinction between positive and negative, if subtraction doesn't work, addition doesn't either. That's kind of strange. I thought infinity plus infinity would be infinity. It's true that thinking that way could be convenient, but in this case, it's because we prioritized consistency of the calculations. By the way, what about multiplication between two infinities? Let's try it. Since infinity is defined as 1 over 0, calculating it like a fraction gives us this. This means it becomes 1 over 0, and the result is infinity. Multiplication between two infinities resulted in infinity. But adding two infinities didn't work. This is getting even more mysterious. Finally, let's prove the equality that was the issue this time. Huh? Proof you say? Isn't this just the definition of infinity? Well, you could think of it that way, but it's actually a little different. Try calculating this expression. However, for simplicity, let's assume that 1 over 0 is equivalent to 0 to the negative 1. The negative 1 exponent means taking the reciprocal, right? Since 0 is identified with the ratio 0 to 1, we just need to calculate this expression. Here too, assuming we can calculate it like a fraction, taking the reciprocal flips the numerator and denominator. Then, ah, it became infinity. Wonderful Zundemon. This means the equality has been proven. So that's what proof is about. I'm starting to lose track of what we're doing here. By the way, just, just a little side note. Strictly speaking, the operations such as addition and multiplication we defined here need to be proven to yield unique results. What's called well-definedness. But it's too technical so we've skipped it here. Sounds complicated, so I'm fine skipping it. This time we introduced the concept of the point at infinity, but there's actually more to the story. If we extend this idea of mapping the circle to the line from real numbers to complex numbers, we can map the sphere to the plane. If we think of each point on the plane as representing a complex number, then the sphere corresponds to all complex numbers. However, just as in the case of real numbers, this one point doesn't correspond to any complex number, and can be regarded as the point at infinity. This is called the Riemann sphere. I don't really get it, but it's a cool name. Also, this time we added just one point at infinity to the entire set of real numbers, so there was no distinction between positive infinity and negative infinity. But there's also a system where we add positive or negative infinity to the real numbers, and in that case, Positive and negative infinity are clearly distinguished. That exists. It's amazing how infinity can have different interpretations. Alright, now I can proudly divide by zero starting today. Good for you. But people might look at you a bit strangely, you know. That's exactly what I want. Well then, take care everyone. See you again.